the Midwest invasion of 1967 codenamed Operation Torch, was a military operation between Nigerian and Biafran military forces during the Nigerian Civil War. The invasion began on August 9 when 3,000 Biafran soldiers led by General Victor Banjo crossed the River Niger Bridge into Asaba. Upon reaching Ogbo, the Biafrans split up. With the 12th Battalion moving west capturing Benin City and Or, the 18th Battalion swung south, taking Warai, Sapili, and Ugeli, while the 13th Battalion headed north for Orchi, Ajenbode, and Okene. Simultaneously, a plot to capture Midwestern Governor David Ijor at his home in Benin failed. Nevertheless, the Biafrans, meeting virtually no resistance, had seized the entire Midwestern region in less than 12 hours. Plans were drawn for the 12th Battalion to continue its advance towards Lagos and Ibadan. However, it was cripplingly delayed due to arguments between Ojuku and Victor Banjo on whom to appoint as governor of the Midwest, giving Gown enough time to assemble a defensive line in the West. Also, during the occupation there was widespread hostility between native Orobo Isoko, Ioid and Itsukiri people against the occupying Igbo soldiers. Igbo and native militia groups launched hit and run and reprisal raids against each other. In an attempt to ease tension, Ojuku proclaimed the Republic of Benin under Governor Albert Okonkwo on September 19, only for Nigerian troops to enter Benin the next day on the 20th, ending the new republic's 24-hour span. The Biafran situation rapidly deteriorated following a Nigerian attack by Murtala Mohammed's 2nd Division at Or, forcing the Biafrans to immediately retreat. In a large pincer movement, another Nigerian force headed south from Orchi towards Benin, as Benjamin Adekunle's 3rd Marine Commando Division landed at Warai and promptly took Ugeli and Sapili. Benin was liberated in a three-pronged attack from north, west and south which met little resistance. Biafran troops that were able to retreat fled across the Niger River bridge into Biafra, destroying it afterwards. Those that were cut off abandoned their weaponry and uniforms and blended into the civilian population until it was safe to return east. The Biafran retreat from Or is considered the turning point of the war. Chapter 1 Background Chapter 1 Section 1 Pre-War Events Following the 1966 Nigerian coup d'état, and the subsequent 1966 Nigerian counter-coup, a wave of resentment and hostility against Igbos because of their involvement in the former coup culminated in the 1966 anti-Igbo pogrom in which 30,000 Igbos and Easterners have been estimated to have been killed. Following the erosion of military discipline and trust caused by the killings, a new regional military structure was formed with military districts in the four regions of the country. However, this raised problems as the ethnic structure of the Midwestern military was heavily lopsided towards the Midwestern Igbos, who not only made up a sizable portion of troops, but over 75% of the 42 Midwestern officers were Igbo. In an attempt to prevent abuse of power, Ijo refused to allow a group consisting of Yon de Colo and Lieutenant Colonel Mike Oakchime from importing weapons, instead choosing to ask the federal government for weapons directly, of which they sent a small amount of Mark V rifles for the 300 soldiers in the area. This, along with the lack of effort to raise any new troops left the Midwestern region in an incapacitated state by the time the Biafrans invaded in 1967. At the September 1966 Constitutional Conference for the Future of the Country, the Midwest was the only region in favor of a strong federation. Seeing that the oil, cocoa and palm oil-rich region would quickly find itself a target of expansionist leanings by its larger, more powerful and consolidated neighbors. This was disagreed upon by many Midwestern Igbo officers, who believed the Confederate and secessionist proposals by the other regions were a better approach to the issue, but this was dismissed by Ijaw and his cabinet. Further negotiations were held in Aburi and Benin. Even so, differences in the interpretation in these accords led to an even greater divide between Ojuku and the federal government, later leading to Biafra's declaration of independence on May 30, 1967. Chapter 1 Section 2 Post-War Events During a June 7 military conference in Lagos following the Biafran declaration of independence, 
Ijaw was told Midwestern state will be kept free from active operations unless where necessary, but the border between the eastern states and the Midwest will be completely sealed off. Later in a speech in Asaba, Ijaw reiterated that the Midwest would not be sucked into a war between the East and the North. This was followed by a redeployment of federal troops away from Okene. By the time of the start of the invasion, there was only a token force of 300 troops in the entire Midwestern military command. After Nsukka fell to the Nigerian army on July 14 during Operation Unicord, President Odumegwu Ojuku knew that the Nigerian army would next set their sights on the Biafran capital of Enugu. After a mission to recapture Nsukka on July 30 failed and resulted in death of Major Kaduna Nziogwu, Ojuku began drawing up plans for an invasion of Nigeria's Midwestern region in an attempt to divert attention away from Enugu, as well as to perhaps bring a quick end to the war. In Ojuku's words, our motive was not territorial ambition or the desire of conquest. We went into the Midwest purely in an effort to seize the serpent by the head, every other activity in that republic was subordinated to that single aim. We were going to Lagos to seize the villain gown, and we took necessary military precautions. Chapter 2 Invasion On the night of August 8, a Biafran assault company landed at John Holt Beach in Asaba. Within minutes they had captured the post office and catering rest house, and had disconnected all major communication lines in the city. At 3 a.m. on August 9, 1967 after a signal was given, a 3,000-strong mobilized rifle brigade of Biafran soldiers under General Victor Banjo crossed the River Niger Bridge at Onitsha and entered Asaba, the core of what was to be the 101st Division, dubbed the Liberation Army of Nigeria and Midwest Expeditionary Force with Lieutenant Colonel Emmanuel Ifejina as its Chief of Staff, and Chio Izichi as its Quartermaster General. When the Biafrans reached Ogbo they split into three fronts. With the Biafran 12th Battalion under Lieutenant Colonel Festus Akar moving west to Benin City, which was captured with little opposition as Biafran soldiers fired their weapons into the air upon entering the city. The 18th Battalion under Major Humphrey Chikuka made its way into the oil-rich Niger Delta, towards Warai, Sapili, and Ugeli, while the 13th Battalion under Colonel Mike Inveso swung northwards towards Orchi and Ajenbode. By August 13, they succeeded in also taking Okene, Iloshi, and Atanai. A detachment was also sent to Jebba to destroy a bridge over the Niger River there. The 13th Battalion was given the job of defending the Biafran north flank while also cutting off Nigerian supplies going to Nsukka. A Nigerian army unit was pursued by Biafran soldiers to the Siluko River where the two sides exchanged fire, before the Nigerians managed to escape under the cover of darkness. Unbeknownst to General Banjo a unit of Biafran soldiers under Midwestern Lieutenant Colonel Oki attacked the government residence of Midwestern Region Governor David Ijor in Benin on the orders of President Odumegwu Ojuku to capture Ijor dead or alive. Fortunately for Ijor, Quartermaster Lieutenant Colonel Ove Bimudia changed the guard detail at the government house the night prior, replacing troops that were in on the plot to hand over Ijor. His guards resisted the attacking by Afrans which gave Ijor enough time to escape and flee to Lagos. Within twelve hours of the initial invasion the Biafran army had control over the entire Midwestern region, most of it taken without a fight. The 12th Battalion was transformed into the 12th Brigade and given the job of quickly capturing Ibadan and Lagos from two axes at the towns of Or and Okitipupa but this was postponed for three days while President Ojuku and General Banjo argued over whom to appoint governor-slash-administrator of the Midwestern region. Not wanting to appoint an Igbo over non ebo citizens General Banjo suggested that either David Ijor, Samuel Ovbimudia, or Colonel Trimnell be made governor but Ojuku refused and ultimately placed the Midwest Igbo medical officer Albert Okonkwo governor. When General Banjo returned to Benin City on August 12 he resumed the extremely delayed advance of the 12th Brigade to make its way to the town of Orr but not to attack Ibadan or Lagos until further notice. In Warai, Major Chikuka released Major Adewale Adamwayega, who had been recently transferred from Uyo to Warai after getting into a fistfight with Major Emmanuel Ifejinar. 
After seizing all the weapons in Warai Police Station he made his way to Benin City, where he was put in command of the newly formed 19th Battalion, which consisted of 700 recently conscripted soldiers meant to support the new 12th Brigade at Benin. The next day Major Adam Waiga relieved Ifejana of his command and replaced him with Lieutenant Colonel Henry Igboba. Ifejana then returned to Enugu as the 101st Division's liaison officer. Chapter 3 – Occupation After being appointed as Governor of the Midwest on August 17, Okonkwo the same day installed a dusk-to-dawn curfew in which only citizens with passes would be allowed to move freely at night, along with other measures equivalent to martial law. The administration was structured in to empower those who supported the invasion, rather than the traditional seniority hierarchy. Local governments in the area were directed to donate materials to Enugu to support the war effort. Salt was rationed because of its use for explosive making. The loss of northern supply of cattle caused meat to be rationed as well. Shortages of other goods soon came about. However, not all of the supplies were distributed fairly among the people. The opinion of the Midwesterners towards the Igbos prior to the invasion was indifferent if not negative. Festus Okotiebo, arguably the most influential Midwestern politician at the time, was murdered in the Igbo-dominated 1966 Nigerian coup d'état. Non-Igbo citizens, especially the Hausa community, were subject to harassment, assault, and murder from Biafran soldiers while women were often molested and sometimes raped, in retaliation for the 1966 anti-Ebo pogrom. Resistance groups began springing up constantly consisting of mainly ethnic Yorobos and Ijaws. Because of a series of uprisings against the occupying Biafrans in Benin City, General Okonkwo began raising a force of loyal native inhabitants to combat the rebels. By August 18 the Conquo had assembled a force of 780 reliable volunteers to keep natives from attacking or killing Biafran soldiers. Loyal inhabitants donated whatever weaponry they had to the Biafrans, which consisted mainly of single-shot rifles and double-barreled shotguns. Cooks began poisoning Biafran soldiers whenever they had the chance to and it was because of this that Biafran soldiers began only eating food that was cooked by ethnic Igbos or self-cooked. Rebellious natives who did not wish to fight would often seduce Biafran soldiers to get information out of them and tell Nigerian authorities. On August 20 a group of arobo slash ijaw rebels raided a Biafran camp and were successful in killing 50 soldiers while 16 rebels were killed in the skirmish. Due to these rebellions Biafran soldiers began raiding and pillaging villages throughout both the Midwestern region and the Niger Delta inhabited by anyone other than Igbo civilians. The Biafran government began broadcasting Biafran propaganda in the region while the Nigerian government broadcast anti-Biafran propaganda as well. On September 19 President Ojuku declared Governor Okonkwo president of the Biafran puppet state, the Republic of Benin, in an attempt to make citizens of the Midwestern region loyal to a government other than Nigeria. Chapter 4 – Turning the Tide On September 20, while the Biafran 12th Brigade was stationed in Awe, the Nigerian 2nd Division under Lieutenant Colonel Murtala Mohammed attacked the Biafrans and almost immediately forced them to retreat. The retreating Biafrans destroyed the Olowa Bridge and managed to get a vital head start in front of the advancing Nigerians. When the 12th Brigade reached Benin City they alerted their comrades, and instead of mounting a defense, the Biafran troops began looting the city, even stealing $5.6 million from the central bank. When the Nigerian 2nd Division arrived in Benin City they discovered the city largely abandoned but managed to find a trapped Biafran unit stationed in the Benin prison, most of whom were killed attempting to escape. Meanwhile, the Nigerian 3rd Marine Division under Colonel Benjamin Adekunle began landing in Warai and captured it along with Sapili and Ugeli. Most Biafran soldiers trapped behind enemy lines abandoned their uniforms and weapons before integrating into the local communities, escaping eastward when they had the chance. Chapter 5 – Aftermath 
The Nigerian 2nd Division continued to pursue the Biafrans but were stopped after retreating Biafran soldiers detonated and collapsed the River Niger Bridge at Onitsha. On October 7, 1967, citizens of Asaba were forced to leave their homes and attend a public dance in Asaba. When the civilians arrived in downtown Asaba they were massacred by the 2nd Division, under the supervision of Lt. Col. Murtala Mohamed, in retaliation for the assassination of Armadou Bello at the hands of Kadun and Ziogwu one year earlier. This massacre became known as the Asaba Massacre. The 2nd Division then invaded Onitsha and managed to capture and hold on to control of the city for less than a day before they were surrounded and massacred by Biafran soldiers.